All right, here we go. The national NAACP has issued a travel advisory against Florida, telling black people basically, stay the hell up out of Florida because Governor Ron DeSantis, I mean DeSantis, is openly hostile against African-Americans. Now, let me just be very clear. It's not DeSantis per se, it is the policy agenda of DeSantis. Not just the NAACP has a problem with this. Two other groups issue travel advisories as, as well. The League of United Latin American Citizens issued an advisory and the LGBTQ Advocacy Group Equality Florida previously issued an advisory too. But the GOP has had an interesting response to the NAACP. Ann Coulter decides to tweet, hey, listen, anyone in tourism, anyone um, who waits tables, prepare for a 0.0% decrease in tips. She's obviously utilizing a racial trope to suggest that somehow black people do not tip. Playing right into the back and forth of the bigotry the NAACP is warning about. You see, policy permeates from people. People have biases. Those biases make it into that policy. Let's count the ways. I guarantee if you were adversely impacted by a particular policy, you would make your voice heard. That's part of democracy. DeSantis administration in January, they rejected the College Board's Advanced Placement African-American Studies course. Programs on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and also decided to pass the Stop Woke Act, which, by the way, restricts certain um, race-based conversations. These things are problematic because we believe those conversations are helpful. As a matter of fact, many, many people do. Um, another organization said, you know, we actually agree with the NAACP. So you have Latin organizations, you have LGBTQ organizations, but the GOP is primarily responding to the NAACP because the NAACP can be utilized as red meat for the base of conservatives. It is ironic that we are starting to um, live in an era where everything black is bad and everything that stands against something that is black is good. I literally interviewed a black male councilman who was a lifelong member of the GOP until recently. And he answered a question. I said, listen, man, when did you change? Why did you change from the Republican Party? What made it happen for you? He said, well, Doc, I was told that I could no longer advocate for black causes inside of the Republican Party. This is dangerous. This is dangerous for everybody. Why? Because we need a balance to it all. You see, I don't want Republicans to be so out of touch that they can't make a point to a demographic um, of color. I don't want that. Why? Because that means the other side, Democrats, they can take advantage of that moment, never deliver anything for people of color in this country. And all they have to do is say, but look at the other guys who aren't even trying. You see, if both political systems actually cared about the vote and the issues and the values and the problems of those in certain communities, competition would make for better politics all day. But it seems as if many in the GOP are no longer okay with diversity. I take it to Kansas. The Kansas GOP literally has a campaign effort right now to eliminate all diversity and inclusion caucuses, the black caucus, the Latino caucus, even the women caucus and the youth caucus. This is problematic. Would you not agree? Thank <laughs> you.